So I finally saw the Predator last night. <sighs> hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. I'm such a huge fan of the original Predator from 1987, which also features Shane Black, who plays Hawkins. He's a comic relief, but he's part of the team that's led by Dutch, who's played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, where they wound up in the Central American jungle, you know, trying to rescue a hostage until suddenly they're being hunted by an alien creature. Still memorable to this day. It's a fun movie, a lot of great action, a lot of suspense, with blood and gore, any of that. It was all depicted in this film. And I've seen that movie many fucking times. Still entertaining to this day. I even enjoy Predator 2, which follows up. And only this time it's being set in the city, which is Los Angeles. And we get a hard-boiled, tough cop named Mike Harrigan, played by Danny Glover. Teams up with uh, Bill Paxton, Mary... Mary Conchita Alonso, yeah, and Gary Busey joins in too, just to stop the alien creature, even though they're going after uh, Jamaican uh, drug lords. That was a good movie too, and I loved it. I don't, want, I don't even understand the hate that that film gotten when it came out, and the fact that it didn't do so well either, and that sucks. But I still enjoy that movie. And it's funny too, because I still haven't reviewed Predator 2. And I would love to review that someday. I really would. I don't have the Blu-ray though for that movie, and I wish I could pick it up. Because I only have the original film that I bought twice on Blu-ray. I'm very disappointed that they decided to go for, for the 4K release for Predator, but they can't even get a 4K remaster for the Blu-ray just pisses me off. Really deserves better than that. And then we got Predators, which I thought, um, which I didn't think it was that bad. I mean, to be honest, it's not as good as the first two movies, but I did enjoy it for what it's worth. I mean, it had its problems, I understand. I know the movie was set in the jungle, but it was never meant to be a remake, nor a reboot. It was just a whole different story. But Then we got um, Alien vs. Predator. I know this doesn't count, but, but that's just the whole part of the series here. Along with the sequel, Alien vs. Predator Requiem, which is the worst of the bunch. I just couldn't believe how flabbergasted I was that Shane Black, who not only directed this film, but he co-wrote it with Fred Deckard. Because over 30 years ago, they wrote The Monster Squad, which is a good cult classic movie about a group of kids trying to stop all these monsters from coming back to life. And they actually formed a squad, the Monster Squad. And they came up with a lot of memorable dialogues, such as Wolfman's got nards. Well, after watching this movie, which is The Predator, I felt like I got kicked in the nards. Yeah. And Shane Black played Hawkins in the original Predator. You know, he was part of the team of Dutch, who was played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. And he was the leader of the team where they're about to rescue a hostage that's being set inside the, the Central American jungle. Till suddenly, uh, suddenly an alien creature starts to attack them. 
and th this is exactly what we went for. Because the cast in this movie aren't interesting at all. I mean, it's really sad that Thomas Jane could have been the lead of this movie. Instead, we get Boy Holbrook from Logan. Is that the best they could do? You also got Jacob Tremblay playing an autistic son of his. Which, to me, that's really offensive and insulting because I actually have autism too. Yes. I mean, what do you think why I posted that video where we went to the Art and Autism event? Yeah. I guess you didn't know that, that I have autism too. But of course, I went there because, you know, my sister has Asperger's. And by the way, the kid in this movie has Asperger's in the film. If there's one thing I can't stand in movies, it's having a character who has autism get involved in everything that's happening. Like, they become the human target. I've seen this before with Mercury Rising and even The Darkness. And I hated those two fucking movies that involves the same stupid situation. I don't like the treatment of autism people getting, getting shit on. Especially in movies. I mean, granted though, I love Rain Man. Rain Man's a good film when it comes to autism. Or even the, um, maybe some other films that, that follow that. But you don't do this. You really don't. I mean, why, why did he have to come up with something this stupid to actually make your kid, you know, actually take, take out uh, a package that has... Uh, the Predator's um, helmet with the gauntlet and all this other all this alien technology that's putting into it from the suit and the fact that he dresses it up for Halloween and the fact that he gets picked on by two bullies actually saying stupid dialogue like I like a nice juicy Asperger's And speaking of the dialogue, boy, did they really come up with it really st incredibly dumb. Like, like they have, they have dialogue such as, eat my pussy, or you're one beautiful motherfucker, or your mama's vagina should be rated E for everyone. I can't believe I heard that. I mean... Sure, it, it's funny how they have to go for comedy for this movie. I know Shane Black have written a lot of comedy elements in films like Lethal Weapon, come to mind. And I love comedies. And action comedies are actually fun, no matter what. But the way they did it is done in a very poorly way. It was so cringeworthy and totally horrible that... I just can't believe they had to took the guts to come up with such shitty dialogue. I mean, the original Predator even have great lines of dialogue such as, If it bleeds, we can kill it. I ain't got time to bleed. Or, you're one ugly motherfucker. You know, with a gang of uh, loonies, as they call them, for a, for a soldier team. And then you get a, a scientist who's attractive. Boy, this, this pretty much echoes uh, Tara Reid for, as a scientist in the movie Alone in the Dark. You even got Jake Busey in the film, who actually plays the son of Peter Keyes, who was played by Gary Busey from Predator 2. And he gets a small role. He even got Yvonne Shresholsky playing the mother, because this is the actress who was in the Chuck, the TV show. <sighs> by the way, the attractive uh, scientist is, is played by Olivia Munn. Boy, I mean, is she wasted? 
Maybe one's wasting this. Okay. Well, let's get to the review. It stars Boy Holbrook, Trevin Rhodes, Jacob Tremblay, Olivia Munn, Sterling K. Brown, Keegan Michael Key, yes, from Key and Peel, and he's in the movie Keanu. Thomas Jane, who's been in films such as Deep Blue Sea and The Punisher from 2004. Yeah, it's pretty sad though, isn't it? Alfie Allen, Augusto Aguilera, Yvonne Chahosky, Jake Busey, Now Matter, and Brian A. Prince. It's written by Fred Deckard and Shane Black, and it's directed by Shane Black. The movie begins when the Predator ship had crashed land on Earth. We meet an Army Ranger sniper named Quinn McKenna, who's played by Roy Holbrook, who's being led along with his team that's being attacked by the Predator while on a hostage retrieval mission. McKenna suddenly discovers all the pieces that's coming from the Predator's armor from the ship remains and actually mails them back home to an overpaid P.O. box but winds up at his house of his ex-wife Emily along with his autistic son Warwick. Yes because at the beginning you know, Warwick is being picked on by two bullies who just pulled the fire alarm and actually says I like a nice juicy Asperger's. So they're about to attack him. Actually knocked all the chests from the chess boards. And suddenly, you know, he got up, he put all the chests back together again and just leaves. Yeah, you know, the entire class already left for the fire drill. Because those two those two bullies definitely got into bigger trouble. So now he comes back home. He then found out that the package is being delivered. He you know, begins to know everything because he, he has autism. Go figure. So he wants to take in the package inside his basement and tries to find out what's inside. And it turns out to be, of course, all the parts uh, from the Predator, which has the gauntlets, the armor and the helmets and he's actually ready to actually try out um, all the alien technology that was inside because he tends to figure that out <laughs> and amazingly enough he wore this as a Halloween costume yeah because it's actually Halloween nights and this is where he goes trick-or-treating and this is where he winds up killing a neighbor and causes his house to explode just when he got picked on by these two fucking bullies that started throwing fruit at him but anyway he also activates the helmet too so that way the predator begins to find out because the predator was already injured so and that's where we're going to lead to this where a government agent and he's also the project stargazer director named Will Traeger who's uh, played by Sterling K. Brown who arrives at the crash scene and captures the injured predator decided to bring it back to the lab for experimentations and observation and that's where we meet an attractive biologist named Dr. Casey Brackett who's played by Olivia Munn who's actually working together with, you're going to love this, the son of Peter Keyes himself, Sean Keyes, who's played by Jake Busey. So they actually strip naked, you know, trying to you know, wear their clothes, and they're trying to get some samples coming from the Predator. Oh yeah, and, and by the way, they even came up with a stupid joke too for this stupid movie, where they should have called this the Predator. They should call it the Sports Hunter or something. Or the Hunter. I'm like, really? Are you going to try to insult our intelligence with its name? Dickless, man. I hate this shit. 
Oh yeah, and he even came up with the line, You're one beautiful motherfucker. What a waste. But anyway, the Predator has been awakened, just as Rory suddenly activated his helmet. He escapes and wants to kill all the lab workers, but actually spares Bracket. Go figure. Um, apparently, um, Sean is being injured, and he actually tells Bracket to, to go, try to follow the, the creature. So he, she's being chased down. But, but meanwhile, McKenna is being chosen for questioning about what he saw and what he found, and wants to be placed on the bus with a group of other government captives known as the Loonies, which actually includes a bunch of soldiers joining in, like, for example, uh, Nebraska, along with military veterans Coral and Baxley, helicopter pilot Nettles, and another ex-Marine named Lynch. Yeah. They're all played by Higo Michael Key, Thomas Jane, Alfie Allen, Augusto Aguilera, and Trevant Rhodes, all joining in. So anyway, they're being headed to become lobotomized, but suddenly Dr. Brad Pitt discovers the helmet and gauntlet that's being missing completely. So they have to call the bus to, just to have it turn around and head for the lab. So that way Bracket can question McKenna and the rest of the team. The Predator has escaped and they wound up attacking the, the crew at the bus because apparently you know, they're about to uh, <laughs> hijack the bus you know, going after all these guards. So they wound up inside a hotel you know, they got the bracket you know, with the team together, and this is where they started coming up with some stupid jokes and everything. So McKenna was about to ask questions to Bracket about uh, the Predator and how it was found and everything. And it just leads to bigger trouble, too, when Roy actually wears the costume, as I mentioned already. You know, going trick or treating until so suddenly he actually spotted a dog too because uh, the same dog uh, he always closes his ears too because the dog barks so he suddenly pets the dog until suddenly we started spotting all these alien dogs there's two of them um, they already killed one but then they spared the other really alien dogs so that's where the team suddenly saves uh, Rory. So they're about to go after the other Predators. And that's where we started getting the, the giant foot long Predator who actually attacked that Predator that was going after them. And they just found out that they're just, they just had this Predator just attack that one. But of course, they're also going to be able to follow uh, Rory because since he has the, the armor the gauntlet and the suit and all that all the I mean all the parts that's coming from the Predator that since he basically knows about the alien technology because yes Brackett even says it that Spectrum is the new chain for this I can't believe it apparently she's also capturing the the samples of the DNA that's coming from the alien dog and all of that so that way they'll be able to find out about the predator <sighs> uh. so they continue to go all the way down to the jungle because that's exactly what they have to go for just so they can stop all these predators from coming and also the fact that they're going to take the kid to put him inside the alien ship. Yeah, the Predator ship. So it was up to these guys to actually stop them. Oh boy, was this movie such a fucking mess. 
I mean, this movie's so bad. That even they had to reshoot the the fucking ending, which was also stupid too because we begin to find out that there's actually the predator killer. And I'm sorry I'm going to give away the ending because that's exactly how fucked up this movie is. I mean, this is like a gift from the first predator that that it was killed where it was a gift for the humans to actually become the predator killer. Because Yes, Rory's in charge of the operation, so he begins to figure out all the alien technology that he's doing. Deciphering all of their languages, because he really knows how. And that's where they brought in the Predator Killer, where you have a scientist suddenly wears the suit, well, tries out the suit, and suddenly he becomes the Predator, and, and, and he was ready to attack all of them, and then he went back to... To normal. I'm thinking to myself, is this going to be a setup for their sequel? Because apparently, yes, Shane Black is actually planning on working on two more sequels for this. It wouldn't matter because why would I fucking waste my time watching them? I'm sorry, man. I mean, this movie just fucking sucks ass. I swear to God, I mean, I didn't find this movie funny. I thought the jokes in this movie were incredibly cringeworthy and horrible. That I don't know what the hell was Shane Black and Fred Deckard thinking when they wrote this. The characters were written poorly. I mean, they're totally forgettable, not memorable at all. I don't even seem to root for anybody in this film. I mean, Keegan Michael Key is very annoying in this movie, and Argento Aguilera just seems like he's just chosen to be, you know, the wimp of the group. And I even felt bad for Jacob Tremblay to actually play the role as Rory. I mean, he's a good actor. But he really deserves better than this. He was actually in the movie Room in 2005. And he's subjected to this. I already knew that Thomas Jane was going to get killed anyway. And he should have been the leader of the pack instead of Roy Holbrook. I mean, they, they've done nothing for me. Nothing. And you're going to love this. But the alien dog started to uh, fetch and wants to picking up all these bombs so he can actually save uh, Bracket because he's being caught you know, by the guys trying to find out where the creature is yeah it's almost seemed like they're doing a situation just like how they did it with Predator 2 you know with, with Peter Keys like we're trying to, to, to either like the guy or hate him but, so, god damn In the jungle scene, you know, where we spotted one predator who looks like he came from the creature of the Black Lagoon. <laughs> I mean, looks like one. I mean, yes, you get all the predators capturing Quinn's son, and they're about to go all the way on top of the alien ship, where it's suddenly being shielded up, yes, because <laughs> apparently um, one actually got the sliced up. From the shield. Um, Quinn is actually inside the ship while it's been shielded up already. While the other guy is about to actually st stop the ship by actually going straight into uh, the wing just to shoot it all up. So that way the ship can go down and that way he can, Quinn can get his son out of there and shoot down the, the predator and yes you know that memorable scene where um, where in the original predator where Arnold suddenly was about to go after that predator and then he says who the fuck are you is when the predator was injured and he was ready to blow himself up instead of bomb 
Well, they try to do something like that in this movie, and he just says to the Predator, Who the fuck are you? And, he, and then he says, Shut the fuck up. And just shoots him. Really? That's the best they can do? For a supposedly badass uh, scene? They can't get it right. Yeah, I mean, great. I mean, on top of that, you get a cast of of loonies here trying to become badass and macho. But they just come across as just stupid idiots. Fucking annoying with all these stupid, dirty jokes. It's ridiculous. And then you get uh, a scientist who's, who's attractive. She begins to know everything. Yeah, a biologist. Just collecting samples from the Predator. And they team up with a kid with autism. That's your story. That's your fucking story. I mean, and to me, it's... It really insults my intelligence. It really does. Because I love the original Predator, and I love Predator 2. Predators was okay. But... I had to say... I better watch Predators even more than this. And I guess even for the worst route, <laughs> this movie even makes Alien vs. Predator Requiem look like a masterpiece. I mean, yeah, that film definitely had some action. Except for the fact that it was dark and murky. You know, I think I'm glad that Schwarzenegger didn't came back. Because he knew that his cameo was written very shortly. They were even going to get 50 Cent to be in this. which I, That would be a whole lot worse to have him. Uh, so I'm glad that didn't happen. I know they were going to get Benicio Del Toro, but that didn't work out either. Andrew Jackman did the score for the movie, which apparently had a ripoff of, of the original score by Alan Silvestri. I love that score. I never forget that. Although, they still have an echo to the original scores. So I think they still put it in. And I always love that score. That's probably the best thing about this stupid movie, is the score is that they still have the Alan Silvestri score, but they, but the rest of the music was done by him, especially with the ripoff. And maybe the first Predator pretty much echoes uh, the original Predator from 1987. So those are probably the only good things I like about that, but the rest just sucks. The rest of the whole idea, the rest of the subplot, Involving the an autistic boy, you know, discovering alien technology and begins to control it, and suddenly the predators start to go after him. So yes, he becomes a target, just like Mercury Rising, where a bunch of bad guys started to go after him. Again, man. There is nothing to like about this movie. And I'm amazed that they spend $88 million for this piece of shit. Just for the CGI effects. Which the CGI effects are not very good at all. They're terrible. Horrible. Even the camouflage isn't, isn't much to say. Uh, even the, the Predator's vision doesn't look that good at all. What a fucking waste. I better watch the original film along with the sequel. I better watch Predators over this. I better watch Alien vs. Predator over this too.
is like the last movie Alien Covenant even Predator suffers the same problem but quite frankly this is definitely the worst movie of the Predator franchise and also the worst movie of the year it's gonna be right up there with Fifty Shades Feces True for Dare and all these other bad films that just came out this year including Unfriended Dark Web so stay away from it because this fucking movie is one giant ugly motherfucker so anyway I get the Predator what else zero stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora. I'll see you later, much later. Bye!